higher hello arati Hi Anjana, how are you? Hi Saumya, thank you. Fessy, hi, how are you? Hi Neetu Mom. Hi all. Good afternoon. I am Jinsi from Ajnora Institutions. I am extremely happy and proud to be here today as part of Ajnora family. Um, again our students uh, rewarded us with uh, huge, their huge success um, especially in OET. Um, the last results uh, were received were the best among um, the results in India, I think, because uh, we crossed um, 300 uh, results this time. And I think this is the uh, first institution in India to have uh, that uh, many results in one sitting. Um, a big congrats to all, um, to each and everyone in Ajnora family. It is of course the result of your effort and hard work. Um, and um, our students were there with us to celebrate their success uh, as always. Uh, and they are all uh, very happy and um, uh, we helped our best, uh, we tried our best to help them achieve their dreams. Um, congrats to all staff, um, all teaching and non-teaching staff and uh, congrats to all our students um, uh, who succeeded this time. Um, this is the celebration <laughs> after our big result. And IELTS was the same, uh, we are getting good results for IELTS as well. Uh, so, if you are thinking about OET or Ajnora or, or IELTS, uh, Ajnora is your option um, and we can help you to achieve your dream. Um, again, there is one more news that is uh, UK NHS uh, direct interview is um, going on, uh, will be held uh, on tomorrow and it will be in uh, Bangalore. So, um, if anyone wants to uh, go and uh, do the interview uh, they are all welcome uh, and it uh, the processing will be finished in three months and um, uh, if you have desired score uh, in OET uh, just uh, you can go directly to NHS without any fee and um, it with the processing will be done in three months so if anyone is interested in that uh, you can come and join the um, interview there uh, at Bangalore and um, Namade Ajanoreki, as usual, Ure Pantuval Kudi Educational Excellence Award, National Level Educational Excellence Award, Kriterian Dai. Last week, Namade Director Delil Puy receiving Garing Lokendarno. So, we are flying 
നമ്മൾ ഇതൊക്കെ അറിയാവുന്ന കാര്യങ്ങളാണ് നമ്മുടെ ഓരോ ഡ്രീംസ് കാര്യങ്ങൾ നമുക്ക് ഇങ്ങനെ ഓരോന്നായിട്ട് അച്ചീവ് ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുകയാണ് ആൻഡ് ദിസ് ഈസ് ദ റിസൾട്ട് ഓഫ് ഹാർഡ് വർക്ക് ഓഫ് ഈച്ച് ആൻഡ് എവറി വൺ ആൻഡ് ബിഗ് കൺഗ്രാറ്റ്സ് എഗെയിൻ ടു ഓൾ സോ ടുഡേ ടുഡേ വി ആർ ഡീലിംഗ് വിത്ത് ഡെ ലെക്സിക്കൽ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് ഇൻ ഒ ഇ ടി റീഡിംഗ് പാർട്ട് സി സോ ഐ തിങ്ക് ഒ ഇ ടി ഇൻ ഒ ഇ ടി റീഡിംഗ് പാർട്ട് സി ഈസ് ദ ഡിഫിക്കൽട്ട് പാർട്ട് ദാറ്റ് വാട്ട് മോസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് റീഡിംഗ് പാർട്ട് സി ഇസ് കൈൻഡ് ഓഫ് ട്രിക്കി ഒ ഇ ടി ഓൾവേസ് ട്രൈസ് ടു ബി ട്രിക്കി ഇൻ ദാറ്റ് പാർട്ട് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് നീഡ്സ് എ ബിറ്റ് ഹാർഡ് വർക്ക് ടു pass our reading module our students used to uh, complain about um, reading um, reading module and difficulty in reading and everything uh, I, i said used to is um, uh, not anymore that's what i feel like because um, after developing some strategies and getting more training in oet reading they can perform well and they feel like it is a, a, a easy module now most of them feel it as an easy module and the results in the last two times were uh, proving that uh, only only a few students uh, lost their reading score most of the students that is about 90% students achieved their desired score in oet reading uh that is a good news so uh i'm t- uh, today i'm going to focus only at um uh, lexical questions uh what is mean by lexical questions um it's just vocabulary uh, there will be four questions in each reading that test our vocabulary and these are the lexical questions so uh, as we all know uh, there are two extracts and there will be two lexical questions in each extract that will um um uh, it's kind of comparatively easy actually uh, it's not that hard if you know the strategy to crack those questions we can score that four marks easily okay before we go to those uh, i'm just uh, trying to uh, recap uh, uh, some things in oet reading uh, in part c usually the clues that are used are um modal verbs time expression comparison or contrast uh, scale uh, synonyms and paraphrasing uh, when i say clues um, if you see any of these things just make a note of it because there will be something um, relate there will be uh, an answer option around these things uh, that's what i mean by clues so uh, if you see a modal verb um in a paragraph uh, or in the answer options the answer may be the difference between these uh, modal verbs or if you see a time expression uh, in the paragraph or in the answer options uh, there will be some question uh, related to that and uh, take a uh, note of comparison or contrast connectives uh, usually uh, uh, when you read when you do this uh, reading uh, part c when you see the answers it is usually after the uh, contrast connective if you see a however or if you see a although there uh, in the paragraph usually the writer um, states uh, or says his opinion after a connective so if you see any uh, come across with any of these connectives in the paragraphs just read there carefully and the answer may be around that area again scale there will be questions depending on the scale uh, and uh, i'll give a detail explanation of the scale uh, later on um again synonyms and paraphrasing uh, especially in part b and c uh, you are never going to uh, see the same words in uh, answer options and in the paragraph it's definitely going to be synonyms or uh, paraphrasing uh, so um if you when you see all these things just read there carefully and there will be answer around that area so what are the modal verbs we know uh, we use these verbs and you, we see these verbs every day but we might know these are the modal verbs so uh, these are the modal verbs can could uh, may might shall should uh, would must 
So when you see the model verbs, uh, if you look in uh, part B in some of the reading parts, the answer option, sir, uh, may do this, uh, uh, can do that and uh, must do this. So the answer option, answer is going to be the difference between these model verbs because there is a, um, there is a difference in the meaning between these model verbs. So can or could uh, is usually used to uh, show ability, possibility or permission, uh, may or might again shows possibility and shall or should. Um, uh, advice, recommendation, suggestion. So, take note of this uh, model verb uh, especially because we see uh, lots of questions about others advice or what the writer suggests and what he recommends and things like that. So, if the question is about someone's suggestion or recommendation uh, what we need to look in the paragraph if there is a sentence that says you should do this, says people should do like that. So, we will be looking for that verb and that is going to be the advice from the author or the writer. So, uh, take note of that should um, as well. Uh, would uh, is also a similar word. It is used for recommendation or uh, suggestion. Uh, must is a kind of obligation. So, uh, when you say uh, must uh, there is no option there is no option you must obey that um, for example you must obey traffic rules uh, we can't say you should obey traffic rules it has to be you must obey traffic rules so there is no option for that uh, we should follow that then time expression i said one clue is time expression the words that usually use for time expression is firstly next then uh, after that finally uh, so these are the words there are lots of words that we can use for time expression these are the common words if you see um, this type of words in the paragraph we um, uh, should understand that this paragraph or the sentences are arranged uh, chronologically uh, or um, uh, in a sequence and uh, if it is arranged in a sequence there is a reason so there might be one question related to that a comparison or contrast we are all familiar with those uh, connectives uh, for comparison we may use more more than higher more likely and uh, for contrast uh, the usual uh, contrast connectives that we see in paragraphs are but however although while nevertheless um, uh, uh, take an extra note of this contrast connective because uh, 60 percent of the answers are um, uh, usually um, coming after or before this uh, contrast connectives or it, the answer will be in a complex sentence that use this uh, contrast connective. So, uh, take extra note uh, when we see this uh, connectives in our paragraph or in the uh, question scale uh, we know what is a scale but um, we sometimes might not take note of the scale but it is very important to know the difference between uh, each and every word um, when we say a scale uh, this is an example uh, few uh, means uh, nothing uh, nothing or very little it but the meaning is uh, negative meaning so uh, it says it means uh, nothing a few is bit more there is a uh, bit more there or some uh, many is more than a few uh, most is more than 50 percent that is uh, not less than 50 percent it is always more than uh, 50 percent we may say it's, it's about 75 percent when we say most all is 100 percent so this is an example uh, for a scale um, uh, we usually come across with questions uh, like uh, which uses these words little a little few a few <coughs> if there is uh, words like that uh, in our paragraph uh, then uh, the answer option might be related to the uh, difference between those two words Again, synonyms and paraphrasing, we all know that the answer options are going to be or um, synonyms and paraphrasing of what have been given in the uh, paragraph. Uh, so, we can't look for the same word in the answer option and in the paragraph. Uh, it, it's going to be definitely going to be the paraphrasing or synonym. Uh, for example, in paragraph, it may be like not clear yet, uh, but um, in the answer option it is going to be to be identified 
uh, or uh, in paragraph it says staff needs to be educated this and this but in answer option is going to be healthcare workers or other way around. Uh, then uh, when we say a group of scientists in the paragraph uh, then in the answer option uh, it's going to be a team of people or something like that. So uh, take note of the paraphrasing or synonyms that we use usually in paragraphs and in answer options. So um, have all these things in your mind when you uh, try to attempt pa reading part C uh, questions and answers. Um, there will be you as we know there is usually um, six questions uh, eight questions all together and six questions will be uh, asking for just opinion uh, idea uh, or fact um, and two questions will be lexical questions. So, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, lexical questions uh, lexical questions can be of two types. Um, one uh, will be vocabulary, there will be a word or phrase underlined or given uh, as bold in bold letters uh, and they will be um, looking for the, um, not for the meaning, looking for the uh, purpose of uh, use of that word or phrase in that sentence. Um, in the context. So, uh, they do not, they never ask us for the meaning of the word and we do not need to understand the meaning of the word, but we need to understand why reader says or the uh, writer says that word there uh, according to the context. And there may be uh, the one more uh, uh, lexical question and it is going to be a reference question. So, uh, usually we so see that questions like what the word it refers in paragraph C and um, uh, like that. And usually uh, uh, in 90% cases the uh, that sentence is going to be in a complex sentence. You might not get the uh, clear idea when I say uh, all these things, but we will be doing some uh, question answers in few seconds, uh, then we will you will get a clear picture of what uh, we are being uh, discussed. So, um, these are the two types of lexical questions that uh, we usually find in uh, reading part C. So, uh, there will be two extracts and two lexical questions in each extract that is four questions uh, from one reading uh, that is our four marks. So, we need to uh, be careful when we attempt these questions and I think these are comparatively easy questions to uh, answer uh, because if we know the strategy um, we can crack those questions and we can achieve that 4 marks easily and that is what we are going to focus today. Okay, so, we can move to the first question there. Uh, in part C as we all know uh, the method is um, question, text and answer. So, uh, you cannot, uh, you are not supposed to read the answer options, uh, just read the question first then go to the text. Uh, and uh, we can read the answer option because uh, when we read the text we will get an understanding of what the um, reader is or the writer is saying in the paragraph. With that in mind when we go through the answer options it might be easier for us to uh, understand the answer quickly. So, this is the uh, first question uh, we will read the question there. Uh, in the final paragraph the word trademark refers to. So, uh, take note of the word refers to. Uh, 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 question is not like what is the meaning of trademark or um, um, uh, what you understand by trademark. Uh, the question is what does that word refers to. So, we do not need to go deep into uh, uh, those sentences to understand the uh, word meaning or things like that. Uh, we just uh, want to read the sentence and understand uh, what it refers to. Uh, so, usually <coughs> in 90 percent cases um, the answer is uh, in uh, for lexical questions uh, the answer is going to be in the same sentence. Okay, that is a good thing to know uh, because we usually start from the beginning and till the end and we will be confused. We will not understand the full uh, meaning of the whole paragraph and we will be confused. So, you better try uh, the that sentence 
if the answer is not there you might need to go uh, forward or backward um, and you will get the answer um, sometimes very rarely in maybe one or two percent answers OVT can be tricky and you might need to go further but it's really very rare so the good uh, the uh, thing is to start from that sentence and try to understand what's that sentence saying and can we find the answer from the same sentence itself if you cannot uh, go backward or forward in most cases the answer will be there before this word uh, but you need to practice this uh, lexical questions and uh, find out the strategy and uh, it will be easy for you then so now we will read the paragraph before reading the answer options we are going to read the paragraph i'm not going to read the full paragraph i'm going to i located the word trademark there so i'm going to read that complete sentence this is because the body stops producing the appropriate levels of neurotransmitters that adhd drugs replace a trademark of addictive substances that means the meaning or the uh, a trademark that word uh, refers to something in this sentence there's no need to go to the sentence before or sentence um, uh, after because it says that this is a complete sentence uh, it's not a complex sentence it's it, this is a complete sentence that means the answer is in the same uh, sentence now we are going to uh, read the sentence again and uh, find out the answer this is because the body stops producing the appropriate levels of neurotransmitters that adhd drugs replace a trademark of addictive substances okay now i'm going to look for the paraphrasing or synonym word of this um, uh, uh, sentence uh, in my answer option so answer option a is a physiological reaction okay so when i see that option um, that's what I said the body stops producing the appropriate levels of neurotransmitters. so that's a kind of physiological reaction so I feel like that's the answer now uh, I can uh, we can go through the rest of the options to make sure we are 100% right a substitute medication there's nothing saying about the medication or substitute uh, thing in this sentence uh, a need for research there's nothing mentioned about research in this sentence a common request there's nothing about that there so in this sentence this is the only paraphrasing um, answer option so definitely this is the answer so um, um, elimination method also works out here very well because we can um, eliminate that we cannot uh, uh, that we didn't see uh, in the paragraph so uh, that also will work there sometimes <coughs> we may not be 100% uh, sure about the answer in such situation you may use the elimination round and you will get the answer so i didn't um, it is uh, uh, it is a um, advantage if you know the uh, if you can go through the full paragraph and um, if you know the context that is an advantage i'm not saying not to read the whole text you can but you don't need to concentrate on the whole paragraph you need to concentrate only on that sentence okay so if you uh, if you are a fast reader and if you can understand within one reading it can just go through the sentence and concentrate on that sentence uh, that is the best way but um, if you have this limited reading ability uh, just read that sentence try to understand whether answer is in that sentence or uh, you may need to go backward or forward okay so now we move to the second question this is an example of vocabulary uh, lexical question <coughs> this is um, uh, same type of question um, so here what is meant by the phrase uh, effort substitution in the second paragraphs so what is meant by the phrase so uh, they are asking us for the uh, meaning uh, of the what is meant by that phrase uh, effort substitution now i'm going to uh, go through the paragraph and i pointed my effort substitution there and i'm going to uh, read that sentence 
There is a danger that they tend to encourage effort substitution, explains Dixon Woods. There is a danger that they tend to encourage an effort substitution, explains Dixon Woods. Uh, that sentence does not give any meaning. That means um, there is no answer in that sentence. But so I can, I'm going to move forward in other words. When I say in other words, uh, I can understand that he is going to explain that in detail. Uh, there he is going to say what is he meant by the word effort substitution. So what he says there, in other words, people concentrate on the areas that are being incentivized but neglect other areas. Okay, so that is the meaning. The, um, According to the author, this is the meaning of that uh, phrase. That is why he used that phrase there. So, in other words, people concentrate on the areas that are being incentivized but neglect other areas. Okay, so, if you need to get a good understanding of that, uh, you can go through the full paragraph and it is an advantage and this is uh, that, that is the better way to do. Uh, but <coughs> if um, as I mentioned, if you are a bit slow to read and to grasp things, you can just read that sentence or one more sentence and go through the answer option to uh, look for the paraphrasing uh, of that sentence. Okay, so the first option is monetary resources are diverted uh, unnecessarily. So uh, here it says monetary resources are uh, diverted. Here uh, it says people concentrate. So definitely that is not the answer. Time and energy is wasted on irrelevant matters. Here it says people concentrate on again. So it's time, it says about time and energy. So definitely that's not the answer. There it says staff focus their attention on a limited number of issues. That's a kind of paraphrasing. When we see that word staff, we uh, hear so people focus, concentrate their attention on a limited number of issues. So, the synonym used here is uh, areas that are being incentivized. So, areas that are being incentivized. So, this is the total paraphrasing of that complete sentence. The same sentence is repeated in other words. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, staff is the synonym for people um, focus their attention. That is the synonym for uh, concentrate and uh, on a limited number of uh, issues. Here it says areas that are being incentivized. So, this is the definitely this is the answer option and we may read the next option to make sure we are right. People have to take on tasks which they are unfamiliar with. It does not say anything like that in these two sentences. So, that is not the answer option. So, it is very easy. I did not read the full paragraph. I did not understand the meaning of uh, the full paragraph. Still, I am able to locate the answer in right way. Okay, so, we move on to the uh, next question. <coughs> Uh, okay. So, in the third paragraph, what idea is emphasized by the phrase by no means the be all and end all? So, what idea is emphasized by the phrase uh, by no means the be all and end all? We do not have a clue of what that phrase means, but we are trying to uh, understand that uh, meaning from the sentence. Um, uh, we cannot learn all phrases that is used in English and we can understand meaning of all words and phrases, but we are trying to understand the meaning from the context of those the one sentence or two sentences. Okay, so, here I uh, located by uh, no means the be uh, all and end all. It will be in bold or um, and underlined uh, in the uh, reading passage. So, it is easily to locate that um, there in our passage. So, I am going to read that sentence. <coughs> but antinocin levels are by no means the be all and end all of sleep deprivation's effects on the brain or the body. 
but adenosine levels are um, not only uh, of or something like that of sleep deprivation effects on the brain or the body. When we read that sentence, we can see that that is continuation of something. It says, but adenosine levels are uh, and things like So, that is the continuation of the previous sentence. So, so, we need to read that sentence as well to understand the meaning of this sentence. Otherwise, um, we, we will not get the answer answer of this question this is not a complete sentence is continuation of the previous sentence so i'm going to read the uh, sentence as well uh, mccurley and colleagues found that infusing adenosine into rats basal forbin impaired their performance on at attention test similar to that seen in sleep deprived hum human Okay, so uh, as I mentioned earlier on, um, sometimes very rarely we might not be able to um, uh, read the or under the un understand the answer from those uh, one or two sentences. In that case, I am going to go backward again. Uh, adenosine may underlie uh, some of the cognitive deficits that result from sleep loss. Okay, that sentence makes sense. Adenosine may underlie some of the cognitive deficits that result from sleep loss. Um, uh, some people found that infusing adenosine into rats basal forbin impaired their performance on an attention test similar to that seen in sleep de deprived humans. But adenosine levels are by no means or something of sleep deprivation effects on the brain or the body. Okay, so <coughs> adenosine may underline some of the cognitive decision, but only not only adenosine, that is what here it says by but adenosine levels are uh, of. So, the meaning is going to be in that way, and I am going to uh, adenosine may underline some of the cognitive deficit, uh, but adenosine levels are it says maybe something like not only the um, bad effect of uh, sleep deprivation or something. So, I am going to look for answer options uh, to see is there any paraphrasing of uh, any of these uh, three sentences. So, uh, our option A is sleep deprivation has consequences beyond its impact on adenosine levels. Okay, so sleep deprivation has consequences beyond its impact on adenosine levels. So, that sounds like the same thing. Adenosine uh, may underline some of the cognitive deficits that result from sleep, but adenosine levels are uh, not only the um, uh, after effects or something of sleep deprivation effects on human uh, of the brain or the body. That means that is not the only effect sleep deprivation has consequences beyond its impact on adenosine levels. That is it, it is bit difficult to understand. Um, we, um, we try the uh, elimination method. So, we can go through the other options. Adenosine levels are a significant factor in situations other than sleep, um, uh, other than sleep deprivation deprivation. It says adenosine may underlie some of the. So, it says adenosine levels are. So, that is not the answer definitely because it is uh, given as opposite. The role of adenosine as a response to sleep deprivation is not yet fully understood. There is nothing uh, saying uh, uh, they found something. They, there is nothing about uh, it is not clear or it is not fully understood or anything like that. The importance of the link between sleep deprivation and adenosine should not be underestimated. There is no mention about such things. So, there is no mention about studies. It should be done uh, in uh, more detail or it is not fully under there is no sentences like that there. And um, it says adenosine level may underlie. So, definitely we can eliminate tho those three answer options and it is going to be the uh, right answer. Okay, sometimes um, uh, we might be able to understand the proper meaning of the answer option um, or we can understand we can't understand the answer option in full but uh, elimination process will work better there in such situation okay so you need to practice this every day and uh, try to understand that strategy uh, then you develop that skill when you develop that skill you will be able to uh, crack your OAT reading easily so we move to the uh, next vocabulary lexical question. Here the question is 
the writer uses the phrase a silver lining in the final paragraph is uh, to emphasize so he is using uh, the phrase to emphasize something okay now i'm going to go to the paragraph to locate silver lining and it's there uh, so i'm going to read that sentence but there is a silver lining when i see that but there is a silver lining that's not a complete um, a meaningful sentence there is it is the uh, balance of or um, <coughs> continuation of something that uh, was said previously so i have to read the sentence before as well <coughs> taken together this research is worrying and suggest that it is time for doctors to treat the condition more aggressively and to find out more about each individual's uh, trigger so as to stop attacks from happening so uh, taken together this research is worrying and suggest then there is some suggestion about that research we don't need to understand that meaning um, here he says that taken together this research is worrying and suggest something we don't need to uh, understand the full meaning there then he says but there is a silver lining so there he says but there is a silver lining so when he said this research is worrying that is a negative thing then he is using the contrast connective but there so it has to be a positive thing afterwards we know that uh, contrast connectives are used to contradict different ideas when there is a mm, when he said about a negative thing before that then uh, it is going to be our silver lining is going to be a uh, positive thing okay and if you know we are familiar with that um, phrase silver lining so definitely uh, we might think like that when we see that sentence but uh, it is uh, uh, saying clearly in the passage now i am going to look for uh, answer options okay so answer option a is the privileged position of some sufferers there's nothing saying about some sufferers uh, in that uh, two sentences a more positive aspect of the research so i said it's going to be something positive and we are saying about research okay so here it says this uh, this research is worrying so but there is a silver lining that means a more positive aspect of the research here they is saying about this research that is the subject there and he says it is worrying that is the negative part so it is definitely a positive aspect of the research uh, uh, we can uh, go through the answer options to make sure we are right the way migraine affects older people um, uh, this is the paragraph about migraine it is also important to understand the context as well so whenever you start doing your reading part C it is very important to uh, read the heading of that uh, paragraph then we know that uh, the author is saying about the migraine, migraine throughout all these passages so uh, have that heading in your mind when you read and understand all the questions and paragraph okay so um, i couldn't include that headings there in each slide that's why it's not there so this is definitely paragraph about migraine so the way migraine affects older people is not saying in these two sentences the value of publishing research it is about the research but it's not about the value so that's not the uh, definitely that's not the answer so um, it is a uh, an easy uh, question to uh, answer uh, as i said um, we need to uh, approach part c uh, in a different way than we think we are <coughs> what our students usually try is to uh, go through each and every word and try to understand the meaning of every sentence and uh, they're struggling to complete one paragraph and then after that they will be confused okay so oet doesn't want us to um, uh, 
to have that in-depth knowledge of that paragraph. They know that we have only uh, 30, 35 minutes to um, uh, answer that 16 questions after reading those two long passages. Okay, so they don't want us to uh, understand each and every word in those texts. They are, uh, it is all about comprehension. So we ne need to practice more comprehension, how to comprehend a paragraph. So for that, we don't need to go through each and everything. Go through, run through the sentences and concentrate on what we need to concentrate and try to understand the meaning. So that is a different approach to do part C. Okay, so um, for all these uh, lexical questions that I uh, that we discussed now, um, we didn't read the whole paragraph, but we were able to locate the answer. Okay, so now we move on to the um, next question. <coughs> um, the phrase via a different biological mechanism in the third paragraph uh, explains. Okay, so the phrase via a different biological mechanism in the third paragraph explains. So through that phrase, he is trying to explain something. Uh, so we need to understand what he is trying to explain. Again, I am going to read that sentence there. So the phrase is there and the sentence is starting there. This this testing method is however somewhat unreliable uh, in detecting intolerances because while not fully understood they operate via a different biological mechanism possibly involving chemicals in food irritating nerve endings in the body. So we do not understand um, the full <coughs> thing what he uh, what he meant by this sentence uh, by, only, by after reading only one this sentence uh, we don't get the full meaning of the sentence but we have a clue of what's going on what's uh, what's he trying to say through that sentence so again this testing method is however somewhat unreliable in detecting intolerance because while not fully understood, they operate via uh, a different biological mechanism. Now, he is trying to uh, say uh, the mechanism possibly involving this and this. Now, with this in our mind, we are trying to go through the answer options. Uh, so, option A is the way the skin prick test works in diagnosing food intolerance. So, in that sentence, we did not see any way of the skin prick. So, definitely that is not the answer option. Then or option B, how the presence of food impurities uh, impacts on the skin prick test. So, did not explain anything like that, how the presence of food impurities impact on the, did not get anything like that from that uh, um, sentence why the skin prick test may not accurately uh, diagnose food intolerance. So, it was something like that, that is what we read. So, why the skin prick test may not um, accurately diagnose food intolerance. Now, we are going for the paraphrasing of that sentence in the uh, paragraph. So, uh, may not, uh, may not accurately may not accurately and somewhat unreliable is the paraphrasing there uh, diagnose food intolerance it here it says detect intolerance so that is the synonyms of the uh, diagnose food, food intolerance there they say detecting intolerances and uh, here it says may not accurately here it says somewhat unreliable and again there is a why, why the skin prick test is and in the sentence it says because. So, because is definitely uh, going to be the answer for uh, why, it is not the answer of how, what, when, where, because is definitely the answer for why. So, uh, this is the uh, paraphrasing of the same sentence, so this is our answer option. 
um, just go through the next option how food allergies are triggered by substances used in the skin practice uh, it's not explained there so uh, this is the paraphrasing of the sentence when we uh, locate we know that this is the answer option and this is the place of the answer we are trying to uh, sh we, you should try to understand the uh, synonyms or paraphrasing or synonym words or synonyms or paraphrasing of that sentence if you see that in the answer option you can make sure that that is the answer and we can move on to the next question okay so um, if you do it this way, our reading part C is going to be very easy, isn't it? Especially lexical questions. So, uh, you might think like that now, but you need more practice to make it into uh, practice, okay? Uh, so, uh, in this question, it says, when the writer uses the word cost in the second paragraph, she is referring to. So, what does the word cost refers to? Uh, in the paragraph, the word cost is there. So, I am going to read that sentence. Uh, while these adaptations are necessary to maintain viable pregnancy and sustain life before birth, they come at a cost. Okay. So, this is a nice complex sentence again and it says, while these adaptations are necessary to maintain viable pregnancy and sustain life before birth that are the uh, positive things isn't it so uh, while these adaptations are necessary to maintain positive things viable pregnancy and uh, sustain life before birth they come at a cost so the cost should be something negative okay because it is a contrast connective there and they say that those positive things there that means they come at a cost that cost is going to be something negative again he didn't mention about the cost yet so we need to go forward when read this sentence we can understand that this sentence is not complete and uh, he is going to mention about the cost next so we go to go through the sentence again the biological trade-off is reduced growth which may in turn affect uh, the development of key organs and systems such as the heart and circulation thereby increasing the risk of cardiovascular disease in adult life so these are the negative things the biological trademark of is reduced growth thereby increasing the risk of cardiovascular disease in adult life okay so um, we saw the negative things there as well now i'm going to look for the answer option to see is there any of these negative things there in the answer options so overwhelming evidence doesn't say anything about it in those two sentences placental insufficiency no nothing mentioned in those two sentences uh, it says viable pregnancy yes it is there but that was the positive um, thing in the sentence so we are looking for a negative thing uh, so our answer is, and reduced growth is the fourth option and that's what we read uh, after the course and this is the right option there okay so sometimes we might think about this uh, viable pregnancy because we saw that in the same sentence but when we read the sentence we can understand that the writer didn't mention anything about the cost yet he's going to mention it about next because while these adaptations are necessary to maintain viable pregnancy and sustain life before birth they come at a cost that means he didn't say anything about the cost that now he is going to say about the cost so reduced growth is the answer i hope it's clear now uh, now we are moving to a different type of lexical question as i said earlier on there are two types of lexical questions and they are vocabulary or phrase um, meaning or reference now it is reference questions uh, reference questions means um, it will be it, um, it can be pronounced uh, uh, the, it this they uh, what does the mean this this type of questions are known or uh, also known as lexical questions but uh, they are the uh, reference questions now how uh, we'll see how to approach this type of questions 
these are the two types of questions. So, this far we were uh, looking at the vocabulary or phrase questions and we, uh, we saw that the answers are in that one or two sentences, we did not read the whole paragraph. So, um, if this is the way, um, if it is an authentic material or if it is an official material, um, this is the strategy when they develop the question paper, this is the strategy they use. So, uh, this should be the strategy to uh, answer those questions, but the thing is um, when you practice on authentic materials or on official materials, you might not be able to apply this strategy. So, um, do not be depressed if you cannot find answers by using this strategy uh, when you use some materials that may not be the uh, official or authentic materials. These authentic materials are prepared by experts, uh, language experts. Uh, who got this training to uh, develop the strategies and develop the question papers, then only we can apply the strategies in answer options as well. Okay, so, um, but definitely on the exam day, it is going to be authentic material and you can apply those strategies. Uh, we move on to this question. In the fifth paragraph, what does the word it refer to? So, we are looking for the word it and we are trying to understand what that refer to. So, in the paragraph, where is the word it says it there. So, I am going to read again, I am going to um, read that sentence to understand if there is anything. Uh, this is because it degrades the energy molecule adenosine triphosphate to produce adenosine monophosphate and this results in the activation of uh, AMP kinase, an enzyme that boosts fatty acid synthesis and glucose utilization. So, uh, this is because it degrades the energy molecule that means that it is already mentioned somewhere before. So, I need to go to the previous sentence because it says this is because it degrades. When I see that I am sure that it is been already mentioned. So, I am going to go through the sentence before it says another uh, recent study showed that sleep restricted people will add 300 calories to their daily diet. Uh, echoing Van Cote's results, uh, Bashir has found evidence that enforced lack of sleep uh, sends the brain into a catabolic or energy consuming state. This is because it degrades the energy molecule. Okay, so now we I, uh, now I know what he says about that. It I'm going to go through the answer option. An enzyme. There is nothing mentioned about enzyme in that in those two sentences. So, it is not the answer. Um, new evidence, uh, new evidence, new evidence degrades the energy molecule. Always try to read, uh, replace that it with that sentence, then it has to make sense otherwise it is going to be wrong answer. So, when I say new evidence degrades the energy molecule, that is definitely wrong. Uh, a catabolic state a catabolic state degrades the energy molecule, a state cannot degrade the energy molecule, so that is also wrong. Then it says mm, enforced lack of sleep, so that is what there it says um, found evidence that enforced lack of sleep sends the brain into a something whatever, so uh, uh, and it says it degrades the energy molecule. So here it is definitely referring to enforced lack of sleep. Okay, so, um, in reference questions, uh, it might not be the uh, paraphrasing or synonym, it is going to be the direct word as it is in the sentence. Okay, uh, but when we uh, looked at the uh, vocabulary or uh, phrases, it was all, uh, it were all uh, paraphrasing or synonym, but when we use or see this type of reference questions, it is not going to be uh, paraphrasing uh, or synonym it is going to be the same word, mostly it is going to be the same word for the from the paragraph. So, we move fast because um, we are coming to an end I think. 
um, in the fourth paragraph the word they refer to so refer what it refer again what it refers so the word they refer to i'm going to locate the word they there they echo earlier research from new zealand that means it is in the sentence before i'm going to go to the sentence before uh, it starts there uh, however studies from the uk and brazil published in chama psychiatry are fueling questions about this and this suggesting not only that it can begin in adulthood but that there may be two distinct syndromes adult onset and child onset they echo so what is the subject there what is the subject of the sentence that we read however studies from the uk and brazil published in jama psychiatry then explain the, all the things in the uh, uh, inside the commas are explaining that subject explaining about that studies we don't need to uh, go into those details this is the subject there studies from the uk and brazil uh, published in somewhere are fueling questions uh, suggesting that but there may be two syndromes they echo earlier research from new zealand now i'm going to look for the answer options syndromes no because uh, it says um, it say there are, there are two syndromes but that is the uh, explanation of the subject that's not the subject of the sentence so it's not it can be the answer then it says questions there's nothing about questions there um, uh, okay so studies that was the subject studies from the uk and brazil echo so those studies echo earlier research from new zealand so the report was the same they echo earlier research from new zealand so studies is the answer there origins there's nothing about the origins so uh, again this type of questions are easy to understand now um next question what does the word this in the second paragraph uh, refer to okay so again refer to i'm going to look for this this is there um so this conformed when i read that i can understand that it's already been said or discussed earlier on so i'm going to go to the sentence before uh, someone and her team at Harvard Medical Co School managed to record an episode of CST uh, in a brain scanner uh, during migraine aura, uh, having found a patient who had the rare ability to be able to predict when an aura would occur. This confirmed. So it says they managed to record an episode of CST in a brain scanner during migraine aura. So they were able to record an episode uh, of CST in a brain scanner during migraine aura. Uh, don't need to uh, um, understand the things in the bracket. Having found a patient, that is the that is how they uh, conducted it, or um, how did they get a chance? That explains that it's nothing about this. This confirmed a long suspected link between CST. Uh, and uh, the aura that often proceeds migraine pain now i have an understanding of what's happening in that sentence so i'm going to look through the answer options uh, a the theory that connects csg and aura the theory confirmed a link there's no that's not a theory so that's not the option the part of the brain where aura takes place it doesn't say anything about the special part of the brain the simultaneous occurrence of cst and dura that's what she recorded so that may be the answer i'm going to go through it again uh, episode of uh, cst in a brain scanner during migraine aura so the simultaneous occurrence of cst and aura that's what she is saying about there uh, the ability to predict when and aura there's nothing about prediction or ability so this is our answer option i'm going a bit fast I'm, i know that you can this is the uh, sample answers or sample reading material from our oet official website so you can go through this reading uh, again and again and try to understand how it applies okay so the next question is what does the phrase this rule in the fifth paragraph refer to so i'm going to locate the word this rule is there uh, but there are no so many exceptions to this rule 
that means the rule is already been uh, set so i'm going to go through the sentence before broadly speaking dr sutter says the ideal recipe for a food allergy is to be born of uh, is to be born of allergic parents and then to have a high exposure to an allergenic food state but there are many exceptions to this rule so the rule is already uh, mentioned uh, there in this sentence and i'm trying to understand the rule so think about the strategies or the clues that we were discussing earlier on uh, so uh, can we apply any of those strategies there in this sentence to be born of allergic parents and then and then to have a high exposure to an allergenic food stress so that is a uh, chronological expression or that is a sequential expression so uh, first born of, of allergic parents and then to have a high exposure but there are but he's saying there are so many exceptions to this rule now i'm going to the answer options the likelihood of having an inherited allergy no because we uh, need to understand only one sentence uh, uh, to answer this question so uh, in that sentence it doesn't say anything about this the type of diet that sentence doesn't say anything about the diet the degree of contact with allergens needed there's it, it doesn't say anything about the degree uh, when it says degree is going to be more higher and things like that but doesn't say anything about the degree the order of events most commonly found prior to allergic attacks so this is a sequential expression he is saying about that sentence in, is saying about some order first this and then this so the order of events found prior to allergic attacks uh, is that rule is not right that's what he is saying that so that answer option is also again um, very easy to locate here the elimination process will also work out very well so um, i know i did a marathon through the uh, reading but uh, if you uh, take your time and practice and, and if you develop your skills uh, you will all uh, be able to uh, answer the lexical questions in OET part C, uh, reading part C. Uh, the, uh, as I mentioned, the other uh, questions are going to be uh, fact, uh, opinion, or, or gist, or attitude questions. Uh, the six questions. So uh, we will come uh, with more um, reading strategies and clues in the future. Um, uh, I know Namala a prim is a reading a tough on a reading a tough on the Namala prim is a prim angana Namada Manasil or the one on a reading a tough fight to the onana. Our strategies will be getting the practice would say the arena easy at the Namaka say on a module on a reading part C. Upper Kudala strategies part C lavaka rest of questions today Kudala gist idea language and a use and a Enganian express and a nola Kudala ideas and Kudala. Adhani kuru chola video so ayda mukka future le kana questions answer ayan samayang kiti illa. Apna mukka nengal ka nengal doubts kairing lakhe endangi questions thaya comment jaya. Namukka samay mo alay chetta reply jaya. Pini reading le thren parne le angne adhiyan questions na van saade the illa nevi jari keno. Enda ane gilam nengal OET ne kuru chalo jikin na varay ana. Oru oru OET passa varna do matra ana nammada Dream in a Munil or Lana Madari Tata Singular, Adori Tata Side and a coat and OET Namka and you're singing a Kapadichi track at Tangam Koiti, Namki, easy at a pass on all. You need to uh, uh, take some effort. There, how would Namka Patum and all our attitude develop? Pea, Adin Vendi, effort to Ka, Adinakurche, positive or Tipur Tingaya, Nanganaka, Namka, easy at a Namada, dream achieve a yam. Any Exam Edam Bone Ella Varkum, Ella Vida Asham Sagalum, Pine Exami Pay Result on the Rino three students under Apa Adagunda, Result Tak and Alla Result Akati Rikana, Vilia Confusion, no IT Rikana Namka, Vida Recruitment, nearly all countries like your recruitment, Ireland, UK, Australia, New Zealand, okay, all the processing and free item. 
Thank you.